Good morning. Good morning. Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Welcome this morning to all joining us uh, in person and to those joining us from home online. Welcome this morning as we are gathered here in the Spirit to worship God, to sing God's praise, and to listen for God's word to us. I'm sure by now um, that everyone has had an opportunity to hear the news um, either through email or the, the letters that I shared this morning with you that at a session meeting yesterday um, I submitted my resignation to the church as your pastor and um, I want to let you know, I mean it's in the letter, but um, this is really uh, in 44 years of life, this is one of the most selfish things I've ever done. Um, I've always done things for everyone else. And uh, there's, I had came to a point in my life where I needed to do something for me and, uh, and to make a change. And in many ways, kind of hit a reset button and reevaluate things. You... Um, some of you I see nodding your heads who've been through your mid-40s and you know what a midlife crisis looks like. Um, and I, I want to say, um, there'll be lots of times to say it, but I, I mean it truly. Uh, thank you for your love and support and prayers. As I mentioned in the letter, uh, and, and as you all know, as you've walked with me these past five and a half years, Personally, for me, it has not been an easy five and a half years, but you all have been a big part of making that a whole lot easier and more bearable uh, with some of the uh, difficulties that I've been through, and I greatly and deeply appreciate that um, from from the bottom of my heart. And... Uh, my last Sunday will be uh, June 19th. I apologize that that fits on, falls on uh, Father's Day, but uh, we'll let you know more about uh, arrangements and, and whatnot uh, for that day. A reminder of a couple of things. Um, because of that, the uh, congregational meeting that would have been today is not going to be this afternoon. And let me just say, just so everybody's clear, um, my resigning has nothing to do with a 2% or a 4% raise. Um, it really was about making a change that I needed in my own life. Uh, so uh, there will be a congregational meeting on Sunday, June 12th. Uh, it's really just kind of a formality, but it's a, a thing that it, it is up to the congregation to call a pastor to change those terms of call and to uh, dissolve the the call. And so on uh, June 12th, we will do that in a short service after, uh, or a short meeting after worship, and then the, path, the last day will be uh, June 19th. I will still be on leave uh, May 23rd through the 28th, so I won't miss a Sunday, but I'll be out of town. Um, also, a reminder to the committees that we uh, are meeting tomorrow night. Uh, the faith committee is going to meet at 3 p.m., then stewardship at 5 and fellowship at 6. There will be also will be a session meeting, um, and I would ask that uh, coming up next Sunday, the 22nd. And I would ask, uh, this is early prayer request, but um, be praying for the session members because uh, it's, it's a difficult thing to be in leadership uh, during a transition. One little piece I do want to say is that this situation is different from eight years ago. Uh, eight years ago, there had been quite a bit of turmoil, and you found out your pastor was leaving the same day they left, and uh, 
and we're not doing it that way. Uh, we've had five and a half years of relative stability, as relative or as stable as I do, um, and uh, we are at a different place. So, uh, for those of you who are concerned and worried about what next, um, I would just encourage you uh, to have faith and uh, trust that God is at work uh, through through this circumstance, not just for me. Uh, but also for you as well. That is all I will say about that this morning. Um, there will be some more information coming out in the newsletter uh, for June, so watch uh, that about uh, the transition. Are there any other announcements this morning? Yes, Bev. PW will be Wednesday at oh. noon. Yes, thank you. PW Wednesday. Did I miss that? In I did. My apologies. Uh, PW Wednesday at 10 a.m. Can't believe we're already to the third Wednesday. It just goes by too quickly. Let us pray. In this season of Easter rejoicing, we offer up our prayers and our thanksgiving knowing that you, O oh God, raise us to new life in Christ. We pray this morning for the well-being of your creation. We thank you, O oh God, for the beauty of this earth. And we pray that we may pro promote its ability to care for and provide for us through the bountiful seas and the beautiful land and each of your precious creatures, great and small. We pray, O oh God, that you raise us to new life in Christ. We pray for your church, your church around the world and your church here amongst us, that our generous witness may broaden your table as all find a place to live and grow in love. And so, O oh God, raise us to new life in Christ. As we walk through a time of change and transition, calm our fears, comfort our grief, and encourage us with hope. Raise us to new life in Christ. We pray, O oh God, for the welfare of your world, that all leaders and all people, young and old, would strive to live together in peace and in harmony while serving the common good O oh God, raise us to new life in Christ. We pray for all who suffer violence, pain, or grief. We pray that they will know the comfort of your presence as you wipe every tear from their eyes. O oh God, raise us to new life in Christ. For the love made known to us in Jesus Christ through this community and for this and all other blessings, we give you thanks and praise. O oh God, raise us to new life in Christ. For all who have gone before us, we pray that you will bring them to the fullness of your joy where mourning and pain and sorrow will be no more. O oh God, raise us to new life in Christ. For all of the secret hurts and pains that we carry in our hearts, the ones that we worry to whisper, we lift them up to you in silence. O 
O God of love, raise us to new life in Christ. For the many blessings and for answered prayers, we give thanks to you, O God, through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and loving God, by your Spirit open our hearts, our minds, our ears, our hands to receive your word. Help us to hear what you are whispering to us this morning. May our love be rekindled through your Spirit and through your Word. And may we be empowered by your Spirit to take that Word out into the world. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Our first scripture reading this morning comes from Psalm 148. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise the Lord from the heights. Praise Him, all His angels. Praise Him, all His hosts. Praise Him, sun and moon. Praise Him, all you shining stars. Praise Him, you highest heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. He established them forever and ever. He fixed their bounds which cannot be passed. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps, fire and hail, snow and frost, stormy wind fulfilling his command. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and women alike, old and young together, let them praise the name of the Lord. For his name alone is exalted. His glory is above earth and heaven. He has raised up a horn for his people, for all his faithful, for the people of Israel who are close to him. Praise the Lord. And then a reading from John chapter 13. Verses 31 through 35. This is following the Last Supper and foot washing of the disciples. When Jesus had gone out, he said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God all, will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment that you love one another. 
Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Anyone who tells me that God can't speak through the lectionary, that God can't speak to our current day by prescribed scripture verses that were chosen hundreds of years ago and somehow apply today, if they say that, I will argue with them. This morning is one of those times. One of those times when God speaks to us directly into our lives and our circumstances. In fact, I had, om- I had almost chosen not to go with the text for this morning, quite frankly, because it gets a little confusing and wishy-washy when we're applying this to our lives. Let me set the context for the Gospel reading. Jesus has just had supper with his disciples, He has told them that one of them will betray him. And we know who that is. It's Judas. They all find out because he dips his bread in the cup with him. And Jesus sends Judas on his way. The disciples are still trying to wrap their minds around exactly what is happening, exactly what is Judas going to do to betray him, and what is this going to lead to. Needless to say, regardless of the uncertain future, they are carrying a deep and heavy pain as their friend, their teacher, says to them, little children, I am only with you a little longer. That one hit me. Now, I want to make a clear distinction here. He is the Lord and Savior. I am not. That's important to remember. It, it really, truly is. Jesus is the one who is the Lord and Savior. This is His church. And you are his people. This is not Seth's church. You are not Seth's people. I only work for the one to whom you belong. But one of the things I often tell you is try to put your feet in the sandals of the disciples. And boy, this morning we know how that feels that ache and that pain of knowing that a friend is going to be leaving, and the uncertainty of the future, what it will look like. It's not hard to imagine what the disciples were feeling that night, is it? And Jesus proclaims probably the most important message. He's telling them how they are going to do this without him. How they are going to survive without him in this world. And it's by love. Love one another, he says. A new commandment I give you, 
love one another. Just as I have loved you, so you should love one another. Anyone who is married or has been married can tell you that love is not always easy. Love is difficult. Love in community is a struggle. Because when anxiety gets involved and fear gets involved, or selfishness and ego gets involved, We offend, we hurt, we step on one another's toes. The disciples certainly did it. There's hope for us too. And Jesus tells them to love one another as he has loved them. So I want to stop and ask for a second. How does Jesus show his love? This is not a rhetorical question. How does Jesus... Say it again. Forgiveness. Forgiveness. That is a very good one. Hold on to that one dearly. Practice it often. Whether you have to stand in the front of the mirror and say, I forgive you, or whether you have to go to someone else and ask for forgiveness. Very good one. Gold star for Jackie. How does Jesus show his love? Through his spirit. Through his spirit. Absolutely. We're coming up on Pentecost in just a few weeks. The disciples were not left to do this alone. That's the good news. Jesus sent the Spirit to fill them, to guide them, to nudge them, to empower and encourage them to go out and do the things that He did. In fact, Jesus Himself said something so wild. He said, you will do greater things than He has done. And we're talking about a man who gave sight to the blind healed the sick, and raised the dead. That's how much He believes in you. He shows His love by sending His Spirit. Gold star for Radell. What else? What do you think? How else does Jesus show His love? Teaching. Absolutely. How many times depends on which gospel you're reading. He was out on the mountain or out on the plain or out in a boat standing out in the water. And he was doing so by telling stories, by sharing the sacred stories that of the, those who had gone before him, reminding them of their time in the wilderness as the Israelites were free from bondage in Egypt only to find themselves wandering in the wilderness. He told their sacred stories again and again because that sacred story is love. That's what the whole message of the Bible is. It is God's love story for a people who, quite frankly, messed it up again and again and again. But from the beginning to the end, it is all about God's love and faithfulness. Another gold star. What else? He went out to them. them. Absolutely. He went out to them. He went out to the people. In fact, he called his disciples and he sent them out in pairs. So not only did he go out, but he sent them out to go out and proclaim the message. It wasn't just about gathering in church on Sunday morning. It was also about being sent. How else does Jesus show His love? Yes. 
gold star for Kathy. He gave his life. He gave it all. He tells us that greater love has no one than to give up their life for a friend. Now, thankfully, most of us don't have the opportunity to jump in front of a bullet every day, though there are some. But how do we give our lives up for each other? We do so through service. You have to remember that just as Jesus is telling them that he's not going to be with them much longer, just minutes before he's washed their feet. And they're shocked and amazed by this, that that he would do something so humble. That's a servant's job, to wash someone's feet. And here is their Lord and Savior, their teacher, their friend, washing their feet. And when he does that, he has said again, I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Twice this night, he tells his disciples that you love one another just as he has loved us. If you take anything with you, from the five and a half years that I have spent with you, let it be this. Love one another in the messiness and the craziness of life. Whatever happens, whatever the future holds, love one another. When an enemy stomps on your foot, love them. Maybe don't put your foot back in the same place. But love them still. When a friend is hurting or grieving, love them. When someone is imprisoned, whether literally or spiritually, love them. When someone is hungry or thirsty, Love them. This is his message. Let us pray. Loving God, you sent your Son to teach us how to love. And we learn from him that love means sacrifice. It means giving of our time, giving of our hearts. It means risking, risking joy and also pain. And loving one another means service. Help us, O God, to continue each and every day to love as you have loved us as we seek to serve one another, especially in times of transition and change. When fear creeps in, drive it out, O God, with your perfect love. Where darkness, shine, where darkness and shadows are before us, shine the light of your love that we might see our way back to you. And help us to always, through your Spirit, know the depth of your love for us. In Jesus Christ. Amen. Please join me in the affirmation of faith as is printed in the bulletin. 
This is the good news that we have received, in which we stand and by which we are saved, if we hold it fast, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, that he was buried and that he raised on the third day, and that he appeared first to the women, then to Peter and to the twelve, and then to many faithful witnesses. We believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus Christ is the first and the last, the beginning and the end. He is our Lord and our God. Amen. Don't go anywhere. In the community of Jesus Christ, When we love one another, nobody sings alone. Good parable, thank you. (laughs) May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of God's Holy Spirit abide with all of us, today, tomorrow, and forevermore. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.